On today's episode, we're going to review two past events, one by Mission Pro Wrestling with a Halloween-themed type of show called Don't Fear the Reaper that took place on the 23rd of October of 2021, and of course, Rev Pro with the British J Cup, which took place back in November on the 6th of 2021, but of course, we cannot forget the NWA Power, which was supposed to be yesterday, but nope, it did not happen, so we're going to see that today, we're going to see what's going to take place. And also, we got AEW Dynamite with the return of John Moxley. And we cannot forget the first ever mixed tag team match between Adam Cole and Britt Baker's taking on freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy and the greatest alien, Chris Atlander. So, let's get ready for another episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to the Lead at Wrestle Zone, all things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay Right here. So let's begin with a past event by Mission Pro Wrestling. This one is called Don't Fear the Reaper. This was almost around the time of Halloween. Um, just on a note here, Thunder Rosa was not involved in this particular event. But, however, there were some implications in this type of event. We have the first ever Mission Pro Wrestling Tag Team Champions, which was something that I didn't think it was going to happen when I first read about it, but it did. I think there's not a lot of the women's tag team, but only in all women's promotions that we've seen so far. But I think it's a good thing. But also we have a the Mission Pro Championship being on the line between Challenger, Jasmine Allure, and the champion at that time, La Rosa Negra. But right now, let's begin with the first match. It started out called Bury the Hatchet Match. But however, this particular match had a little stipulation. Whoever wins this match will get a shot of the Mission Pro Wrestling Championship, which it could be cashed in at any given time, any given where. So this is kind of like what we had with Money in the Bank, but a little more different. So, now there was a lot of wrestlers that were there. I can tell you this: there were the Renegade Twins were there, Will Nightingale, Jody Threat. Uh, I forgot who else, except for the ones in the main event, they were excluded out. But I'm, but I can tell you who actually won this one. We had, of course, Holiday who won. It was very cool. I think everybody found her as the fan favorite to win or so. But she won. She gets a shot of the title. So we will see when will that take place. First match we have is, of course, Willow Nightingale versus Vipress. This one had a very interesting thing. The commentator said something that was interesting. Vipress said that she had, like, a new submission move that will help her win the match. Now, it was still unclear what it was because I think many people don't know the kind of moves we will expect. Sometimes we'll see something new that will surprise us. I mean, we've seen that already with many other wrestlers in the past, but... Uh, this match was pretty good, but however, Vipress got away, won this match with that new submission move. I don't know what it, I cannot describe it, but it's pretty, it gave um, Heller, uh, Nightingale to tap out, so Vipress won this one. Next up, we got Rache Chanel taking on uh, Casey Hagen. Now, Rache seems to be the fan favorite here for many fans. Um, Seems like she's growing a lot more better because I remember seeing her in AEW Dark many times, but uh, she was pretty impressive until she pinned uh, Casey to allow herself to win the match. Next up, we got a men's exhibition match, but they all dressed up in Halloween. We have J.P. Hart, though, dressed up as Peacemaker. And, of course, we have, uh, what's his name? Alex Arsenal dressed up as... A zombie being shot at arrows. 
But it was it was okay match, you know, despite there was only one males match in this one, which I'm okay with the idea. But uh, as you know, JP Harlow always finds ways to ensure he wins, and that's what he cares about, only winning. So he won this particular match. Next up, we got Holodead versus Jody Thread. This match was pretty good. I think it was really amazing to watch because, you know, Jody Thread has been tearing it up. As you know, the history with Jody Thread, she, throughout 2020, she was stuck in Canada, even though she was, was, was stuck there because of the whole border shutdown and all that. But uh, she did pretty good, but it was Holodead who picked up the victory on this one. Despite the fact that she won earlier the Buried the Hatchet match. Our next match we have is, of course, the first ever the Mission Pro Wrestling Tag Team Championships. Which is vacant at the time, but now we'll see who will be crowned. First pitch, first competitors is Bad and Boje, consisting of Lexi Gomez and Catalina Perez taking on the one team I feel like they more established than the others. I have to say uh, the Renegade Twins, Charlotte and Robin. And also you guys may have seen them on AEW Dark and Dark Elevation. But I have to say it was a pretty good match. I think it showed... That Mission Pro Wrestling does need tag team championships. And not to mention you have like a well-established team like the Renegade Twins. And I have no problem with that. But of course you can guess the Renegade Twins did one. When uh, Charlotte picked up the pin on Lexi Gomez to become the first ever tag, te uh, tag team champions. Now our next match is a very interesting one. We have the Battle of Two Tall Women. We got Kylie King. Versus Genocide. I thought this match was insane. However, I did not expect that they were going to use... You know how in hardcore dwarf matches you bring thumbtacks? Well, they brought candy in it. So I did not expect that. But somehow, Kylie King knew she was in, in the big pickle with Genocide. But however, somehow she walked out with as the victor of this particular match. And gained the respect of Genocide. So I have to say, Kylie King, I wish the AEW would like... It to, uh, should sign her because she's someone we definitely could look um, have in the, in in AEW. But right now, I think she's developing her own growth right now. Our now our, our main event is the Mission Pro Wrestling Championship between Challenger Jasmine Allure and La Rosa Negra. Now Jasmine Allure has been on a, on a war path against anybody that stood in her way to become titles. But of course, wherever Jasmine Allure is, the Renegade Twins were right there. Now, they have done everything to take her out, to beat her up, to ensure that Jasmine Allure win, but nothing happened. As you know, La Rosa Negra is one of the toughest individuals in Mission Pro. But finally, when the ref was pulled away from Charlotte, Robin used her title to to knock out La Rosa Negra, allowing Jasmine Allure to win the match. However, it appears that the relationship between Allure and the Twins had dissolved. But there was only one person who's not happy with the result, and that person was La Rosa Negra. She took matters in her own hands and beat up Jasmine Lure. But however, I did not expect it, but it happened. We've seen this on Money in the Bank on many occasions. As you guys remember, there have been times where we've seen wrestlers who won the Money in the Bank cases. Either they challenge for the title on that very specific day they won it, or they wait a little long, a little while maybe short for a month i'm not sure holiday cashed it in and won the mission pro championship now i could guess that jasmine lore probably is disappointed that that happened but hey she picked up a riff with the twins leaving her vulnerable she did not expect la rosa negra will get uh, some kind of a retribution or did not expect either that la rosa negra was going to cash it in. i don't think she anticipated that it's like she wanted the whole world uh, given to her on a silver platter. Well, you did got it, but it was taken away. So I don't know if the, if Jasmine Lord will protest or I don't know. I There's still more Mission Pro Wrestling events. I need to catch up because I still need to get it because there's one that I still need to see because I'm a little, maybe if three or f possibly two or three events away from it, but to catching up. But we'll see what happens then. But right now, I believe it's time for me to move on to the next review, and that is Ref Pro with British J Cup.
Okay, so as you know, I'm trying to catch up with Ref Pro, which I had a lot of events from 2020. Right now, let's go to one that I definitely like enjoy, which is called the British J Cup 2021. Now, those who are new to the channel, you're probably wondering what the hell is it, the British J Cup. Basically, this is a number one contendership tournament with four matches involving eight wrestlers, and then the final match will be a four-way elimination match. Now, the winner will be getting an opportunity for a chance of the undisputed, uh, the British undisputed cruiserweight title that was at, I don't know, it's uh, that's currently on the waist and hold of Michael Oku. So basically, that's what it's all about. But however, let's go from start to finish. Now, the first four matches were in fact part of that tournament of the British J Cup. First match is Michael Oku, who is the current champion, and of course, the winner of the 2019. However, there was no 2020. So he would have been second, first time, second winner of winning the British J Cup. His opponent is LJ Cleary. It was an okay match. It was pretty good. However, I think many fans are probably already guessed that it was Michael Oku. So that's what I believe that. And of course, he won. Our next match. Now, this was an uninteresting. One of the competitors named Michael Mills is taking on JJ Gale. Michael Mills is also the tag team partner and friend and also someone that we question he's a friends with michael oku and this is one of those matches where will they work together to be the finals or it's every man for themselves but he did a pretty good job in this particular match allowing himself to win against jj gale next up we got one half of young guns luke jacobs taking on robbie x now in this per type of match i believe there was a lot of people that were hoping it was going to go to Robbie X because he's a fantastic cruiserweight wrestler but I this was more of the brawler type with with uh, Luke Jacobs but somehow Luke Jacobs was able to won the match in order to advance now people would have wanted Robbie X but this time it's Luke Jacobs who won and our final match we have kids league Le kid Lico's taking on speedball Mike Bailey who makes his return I did not expect he was going to be in this, but it was a pretty good match. And of course, you can tell Speedball won by using those niche, uh, those knee chops right on the back of Kid in order to advance in the final round. So we all got the four wrestlers. Now let's get to the next matches. This next match is from Big Damo along with Gideon Gray taking on Yoda Suji. Now the storyline tells uh, Gideon Gray has been trying to get. Yoda Suji to side with Legion. Now, the reason Yoda Suji will never side, there's a connection with him and Great Okan. Uh, Yoda Suji will never forget how Great Okan was trying to tell him to join him and he, because he tried to prove that Tanahashi is a fraud. But he will never side with anybody who's associate. Gideon Gray is getting frustrated that he's been trying to, but this time you cannot deny the ability of y Yoda Suji. He is now growing better as a wrestler especially in the uk and i think it shows a lot of character so he won by by using a i did not expect this coming from him the shooting star press he had that one move that he saved and it worked i don't know why he did it but i was unexpected so that's how he won but however green gray was never going to let this happen because he tried and tried to get him to join but it didn't work but he was, when Suji thought he had great right in his grasp, another member of Le uh, Legion shows up, Lucian Phillips. And this time, this is going to be more about making him pay the price for not accepting the offer. Our next match is a six-man tag match. We have the United Empire, consistent of Mark Fletcher and Mark Davis of Aussie Open, the current un British Undisputed Tag Team Champions, along with Will Ospreay, the current und uh, British undisputed heavyweight champion, of course, the so-called real IWGP world champion, Will Ospreay, taking on Machine uh, Sunshine Machine, Chuck Mambo, and Takey Cooper, along with a man who is hell-bent on trying to destroy, to destroy Will Ospreay, Ricky Knight Jr. This match was amazing. It had a lot of good uh, spots, especially teamwork. But in the end, it turned out to be all the way to the Undisputed Era. Now, Ricky Knight, uh, Ricky Knight Jr. decided to stay and continue beating the crap out of everybody on Undisputed Era. 
he he's not going to quit. Now, Shy Machine took off. I don't think they want to be part of this. This is more like, this is not our battle like that. So, we'll see what happens then. Now, our main event is the British, uh, the British, the final of the British J Cup in a four-way elimination match. Basically, what we have is Michael Oku versus Connor Mills versus Luke Jacobs uh, versus Mike Bailey. Now, I was surprised how this match ended. Michael Oku eliminated Connor Mills. So basically, he got away with that. I, it, like I said, it was like every man for themselves. But the biggest upset was Mike Bailey crushed the dream of Michael Oku, allow, eliminating him. But later, this match between uh, Luke Jacobs and Mike Bailey was amazing. So basically, it was more like who is more hungrier? But it was finally Mike Bailey who won by applying that shooting star knee drop right on the back of Luke Jacobs that allowed him to win and get a shot of the British heavy, Undisputed heavy Cruiserweight Championship. So hopefully I'll see that match when the like uh, when the day comes, but I still need to catch up. So I think that's pretty much it what we got with Referral, and I believe it's time for NWA Power. Okay, NWA Power. Originally, we were supposed to watch it on Tuesday, but it came out on a Wednesday. It opened up with Zion sending a direct message to Sal Renauer. Now, keep in mind, Sal Renauer got himself involved in the match with Zion and Judas. Now, it's still unclear what is going on with Sal Renauer, but looks like Zion wants to get a piece of him. So, the real question, when will that happen? Basically, he wants to join. Sal Renauer is trying to join a... Um, Father James Mitchell's church or whatever, but we'll see. But we jumped in later with an interview with Kyle Davis being there with Matt Cardona and Mike Knox, who is trying to tell the entire NWA fan base they're not the invaders. They're here to save the NWA because if you guys ever watch the NWA, there is no pyro. There is no music. He thinks that this is not how wrestling should be however trevor murdoch had a lot of things to say he says when i think about the nwa i think about guys like arn anderson harley race many great wrestlers that etched their name on nwa and he w still wants a piece of matt cardona but however cardona proposed he puts his title on the line against mike knox but if he somehow beats him he gets matt cardona and course trevor murdoch has no problem with that now our first opening match is allison k versus kylie ray this match was pretty good i have to say there was a lot of psych uh, psychological uh, work on this one where uh, as you know allison k has this way of uh, exploiting someone's weakness she targeted kylie ray's arm but what she did was pull off a big upset allowing herself to win this match however there is an implication as you know, Kylie Ray has teamed up with Tootie, uh, Tootie Lynn, and Allison K is one half of the NWA Women's World Tag Team Champions with Marty Bell. Does this mean that she that could be a possible that they would get a shot of those titles? We will see when that day comes. Now we go back to May doing another interview. We have, of course, she interviews Kira Hogan and Camille. Now it's later told that Camille will will put her title on the line against. Kira Hogan. Now, you know how Camille is. You know that how people are. But that is something we get definitely because, as you know, Kylie, uh, Kira Hogan did get a shot of the NWA, of the Impact uh, Knockouts Championship, the NWA. So she lost. So now this is more of a new direction where she's going. So we'll see where, when that match will take place. I'm excited to see that. Now we go back to Kyle Davis doing another interview. He talks to the Dirty Boys, and I think this is the most interesting team I've ever watched. But however, they were interrupted by Il Begun. Now, normally we see Russ Freeman and uh, Captain Yuma, but he has another person. But later they kind of said any three people can be in the front. So basically they're saying, make this a handicap match, three on two. So that kind of became like it. So it would show later on, we're going to go to that. Now, once again, we go to May do an interview with Homicide and La Rebellion, the current 
uh, NWA World Tag Team Champions, they basically are now saying, bring in whoever you want. It doesn't matter. We will retain in all this. And they basically are saying that there are rumors what's been going on with them. So basically, we don't know. So I hope we don't know who will be the next most likely opponents that would challenge for the NWA World Tag Team Championship, but we'll see what where it leads us. Now, our next match, we have Matty Rakowski taking on Melina. I thought it was a pretty good match. I think it at the beginning of the match, it showed Matty was in control, but somehow in the end, Ma uh, Melina got, in got into it and basically won by using that one split move that she is very famous for in order to win the match. So this was also a good match to watch. So we'll see if we ever get to see another opportunity with her for the NWA Women's Championship. Now we get to another interview, but this time it became an apology. As you know, there has been animosity between Taryn Terrell to when it comes to Paula Blaze and Genocide. It appears Genocide, it seems like she's not happy with what's been going on with Paula Blaze and Taryn Terrell. So basically, they said they'll bury the hatchet, but Genocide had no say. She just nodded. Now, that could be like the sign that we will see those two break up. I don't know, but we'll see how that plays out. Now we go back to Kyle Davis. He gets an interview with Tyrus along with everybody from Idol Mania uh, Management, where Tyrus is saying that he will be clo one uh, closer to the one goal in mind, and that goal is the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. But right now, he is now the current NWA Television Champion. But he also stated that he has... Clearwater, Jordan Clearwater, and Marshy Rocket. They will be becoming a tag team, and they will be hunting for the tag team gold. But they are set in the main event. Now, our next match, we have, of course, um, the, the 30 Sexy Boys, JTG, and Dirty Dangle to take on the Ill Begun. But all of a sudden, we get Russ Freeman going with the Fixers. Now, it turns out that they made this, both Freeman and Taylor made an arrangement behind Yuma's back. However, this it may have been like a, a really interesting arrangement, but Yuma doesn't seem like he's happy with it. But you can guess that the Fixers and Freeman, aka Il Begun, took an interesting victory on this one. But what does this mean for Yuma? What's going on? Now, our next interview from Kyle Davis. Rodney Mack, if you guys know who he is, he is the real-life husband of Jazz. He was there with Anthony Mayweather, formerly known as Crimson, telling him that he was telling everyone how Jack Stane disrespected him by making insults on his wife. And, of course, Anthony Mayweather agreed, saying that he's making enemies left and right. But, however, some stooge shows up. And serves him, saying that he has to be a mile away from him. So, basically, this whole thing with Jack Stain is not even over. Now, our main event is Hawks Airy, Luke, and PJ taking on Clearwater and um, Marche Rockin. Now, this match was a lot really good because Marche Rockin and Jordan Clever, this were put to the test. However, there was interference by Black G's in order to ensure they went, but however... They were caught by the ref, him and Tyrus. They were sp uh, sent out. But luckily for them, it was Hawks Airy that picked up the victory when they pinned Marshy Rocket. It was, in fact, PJ Hawks who made the pin, which became a very good victory. And Austin Idol, who is not happy how his guys lost in this fashion. But you can guarantee there will be revenge against them somewhere down the line. So I think that's pretty much it what we got with NWA Power. So let's end it with AEW Dynamite. Okay, so the last thing we're going to review is AEW Dynamite. It opened up with the return of John Moxley. I mean, it's great to see him after three months that we haven't seen him. He looks like he's ready for a battle. And he talked about... Things that are true. We do have scars within our inside of ourselves that we try to hide. But those are the real stories that tells us. You know, and everybody deals with it. But he did state that he is looking for an opponent for his return. 
but later on in the entire show it did it, it did had a response all ego ethan page responded to the challenge he thinks that oh i'm going to be the one to take you out so he thinks he is confident that he's going to beat john moxley one way or the other but if i was ethan page i wouldn't count my chickens just yet because you never stepped in the ring with a guy like moxley so we'll see but that particular match will take place on rampage now as you know mjf he tries to consider himself as the victim of of late, the recent development with punk so basically that's how it is and of course it was revealed it was warlow's birthday so happy birthday warlow now our first match is the mixed tag team match we have adam cole and Britt baker taking on Chris Satlander and Orange Cassidy. This match was pretty good. Like there were some good moments where you know that they cannot like in mixed tag team action. We cannot that the women cannot touch the men. The men can't touch the women. But there was one moment where Adam Cole was dumb enough to dare Chris Satlander to jump to take the shot where he's protecting Britt Baker. And I think that was a mistake that he made. But I think the most <laughs> mistake that took place is when they pulled out the table. Now, Orange Cassie was tried to put on the brakes when he bumped into to Britt Baker, and she landed real bad in the ta in the table, and that pissed off Adam Cole. That gave him the low blow, but he did put out an interview saying that he's that Orange Cassidy's been a thorn in his side for far too long. That he wants to destroy him and his career. So he set up a stipulation next week. Will it be a no DQ? false count anywhere no holes barred lights out match so basically you got all things that adam cole would use to destroy orange cassidy now if you guys follow orange cassidy he's been beaten by many adversaries who think of him that he's nothing but a, you know a problem look at jericho he had to deal with him many times over and somehow he got on top of it now if orange cassidy wins this match this will be a pretty good story that shows you underestimate Orange Cassidy, Cole. So we'll see when that when that match happens next week. Now, the inner circle, as you know, there was an interview where they talked about dealing with Garcia in 2.0. But however, it looks like we could see the start of a dissension within the group. Apparently, there's been still animosity between Jericho and Eddie Kingston. But however, Santana Ortiz did point out something. Now, this is something we have seen before. If you guys remember, Andrade pointed out to... Penta and Phoenix saying that Pac is the reason that, well, it turned out they were wrong. Now it's the same story, but this time in a different setting where Eddie Kingston tells Santana Ortiz, and I think they had that tra train of thought. They never won the tag team titles, all because of Jericho. And now they're starting to see, what if Kingston's right? They're looking at guys like the Bucks, SC, who were the first groups, uh, FTR. The, the Lucha Brothers. These are teams that became tag teams. What about them? And I think that puts them in a questionnaire saying, we always had your back. Where were you for ours? So I think that tells us a good story. But it did tell that next week on Beach Break, we will see those three, Jericho, Santana, Ortiz, the inner circle, team up to take on 2.0 and Daniel Garcia. Now we get the anticipated match. We have, of course, Sean Spears versus CM Punk. This one went quickly. I don't think Spears saw that. Even MJF, who was on commentary, couldn't see it. He even tried to sneak attack him from behind, but Punk did not. Punk actually saw that coming. But when he had right in his pocket, he ran like a coward. Now, MJF can say that, oh, Punk ran away like a coward. No, he, we are witnessing he is the one who's running away. But sooner or later, we will see those two face off. Now, it wouldn't surprise me they will challenge each other somewhere in, Rev in Revolution. But we'll see when that day comes. Now, speaking of this, as for the tag team titles, as you know, the Jurassic Express have targets on their back. Billy Gunn went to talk to Christian Cage and possible for a chance of the AEW World Tag Team Titles. Now, Christian Cage... Couldn't deny that, yes, your sons are great. They are they got your genes. But they don't see like they're ready for it just yet. But, of course, when you say no, 
they decided to attack Christian Cage to send a direct message. It wouldn't surprise me that they will get a shot, but we'll see when that match is set. Now, Cody Rhodes come back. I know this is kind of strange, but he put out this promo talk about how people cheered, how people all this, his entire history. So it's kind of like he was giving out a very strong promo. But as you know, he pulled out the ladder match. Now we're going to see next week Cody Rhodes versus Sammy Guevara in a ladder match for two t- for the title, the TNT title. So we might have in the first ever undisputed TNT champion. Let's see what's next. Now, it's been now announced for this coming Rampage during interview. Anna Jay of the Dark Order is volunteered to become the first challenger for the TBS championship against Anna Jay. So basically, Anna Jay did put her to show. You see, Mark Sterling can say all this crap about her, but there's one thing she for- he forgets. She put a barbed wire in her arm to win a match. Doesn't he think he doesn't think that she is, has a dark side? So we'll see when that how this plays out. I want to see how this match is going to go. Next up, we get the debut of the House of Black, Malachi Black, and Brody King to take on the Varsity Blondes. This match kind of ended too quickly for me. It just shows how powerful the House of Black is. It was like a very disappointing loss to the Varsity Blondes, but however, looks like the nightmare's coming back to Malachi Black to haunt him. Pac just sent a message telling him justice will be served. So we'll see. I can't wait to see when that match really happens. Now, we get an interesting message from the reunited Rapongan Vice. If you guys don't know who they are, they were considered one of the best tacked junior heavyweight tag team champions in New Japan, consistent of Trent Beretta and... Rocky Romero. So this time, we're seeing the rekindled feud between both the Bucks and Rapongi Vice. So this is going to be a very interesting development. I can't wait to see it. Not to mention Brandon actually videotaped this. Trent was more nicer to to Brandon. (laughs) It was kind of weird, but it was fun. I think it was like really, really fun. Our next match, we have Frank Gazarin taking on Lance Archer. This match was all Lance Archer. Basically, he was brutalizing Frankie Gazarian until he finally defeated him. And then once again, we have to hear the nonsense from Dan Lambert, who was ringside with Lance Archer on the request of Jake the Snake Roberts, which was strange. But I don't know. We'll see where they're going to go with that. I'm really curious about that, too. Now, uh, Lance Archer was about to destroy, hurt more Frank Gazarin, but here comes Hagman Page to put on some cowboy shit, and that's what he did. He actually did try to do the lariat, but more forearms into the ba- face of Archer. But later, we w- possibly will see a championship match between those two. And, of course, when he- Lance Archer was knocked out of the ring, Lambert tries to reason with him, but... We'll see what's going to happen. We could see a potential match for the AEW world title. Now, in recent events, we have seen Dante Martin, who's been alone ever since Darius hasn't been around. He did, for the time being, has been having the back of Lee Moriarty and Matt Seidel. But as for now, for Lee Moriarty, he did state it. As long as Darius is out for the time being, until he's back, they will watch his. And Team Taz always believes Dante Martin that he's a liar, that he's a big deceiver. He's always been a loner. So they think that they have him right where they want him. But the real question is, do they really do? That's We haven't seen um, a lot of things to take place. And of course, we still yet to see that whole thing with Jay Lethal. That's something I think we're still expecting because, you know, Jay Lito did save Dante Martin when they were about to murderize him. But we'll see where that where they're going to go with that. Now, as you know, Chris Atlander showed up on an interview with Red Velvet. Apparently, they know that they lost. But however, Layla Hirsch continues 
to go out and say some things, telling them that this was really messed up. They what happened in their last match on Rampage, and this was the beginning of seeing Layla Hirsch turn heel. So she attacked both Red Velvet and um, Chris Statlander. So basically, this is going to be good. It's later been sh tell that. Red Velvet will be facing Layla Hirsch at Beach Break next week. I'm excited for that, too. Now we get to our next match. Sky Blue, who will be facing off Serena Deeb. As you know, Serena Deeb took out Hikaru Shida. And Sky Blue, who always looked out to her peers, did not like how Serena Deeb, in fact, did to Hikaru Shida. So she's standing up for her. But it was just too much for Serena Deeb. And she did the same thing by using the le the single leg crab onto Velvet uh, Sky Blue to tap out. Now, as you know, Sammy Guevara was not in country when this whole thing with Cody first appeared. He did little little cue cards I always normally did. If you guys are probably wondering where the hell he is, if you guys have been following his social media, he it was in Brazil, and he did his little cue cards. Now, last week we saw an interesting development between Matt Hardy and Andrade Idolo. It turns out they just revealed what they're planning. It turned out they were going to be a business partners calling their little merger called the Andrade Hardy Family Office. So basically Hardy is saying he's giving him 51% of everything while he takes 49 and all of that. But he did say he will take care of all his guys' private party. The mercenaries that he has a uh, butcher and blade but however he did stated that he still is scouting to have darby allen to be by his side you know but they are going to pay attention to that to the main event which will we have the acclaimed bowens and caster taking on sting and darby allen now our main event we had that it op it started with of course the acclaim attacking darby allen putting a chair on his neck before the bell ever rang so sting had to go alone as a Handicap. Now, much of it, beginning of the entire start of the bell, Sting had everything under control until the acclaim reversed it. They even tried to take him out in every way possible. The turning point was when they removed the safety buckle. Now, when they thought they had Sting right where they want him, Darby showed up like a rocket and took out Caster. And then we saw that everything was going great until Sting did a little stage dive out to take out Max Caster right through a table, landing right on top of him, leaving Darby Allen to pull off the coffin drop onto Bowens, allowing themselves to win the match. And I thought it was, this I thought the show was pretty good. Um I enjoyed it, but I, I think they should have done more with certain things, you know? But I think that's pretty much what we got. So we'll see what's gonna take place this coming Friday on Rampage. And I believe it's time to call it a day. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, me reviewing two past events and real-time events that we have right now. So coming up, we will have day one of New Japan Pro Wrestling's New Year's Golden Series that's going to start on the 20th. I'm excited to see this. And also we got MLW with a, a second number three. And we cannot forget NXT UK and, of course, Impact Wrestling. So I'm excited for this particular days, these Reviews I really want to do for all of you guys. But right now, I believe it's time for me to go. But I'll see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So goodbye. And have a nice day. Bang.